Hi hey everyone. Well, it's been a while. I thought I'd have a week or so off after posting my little video tribute to James Dobson. Um, unfortunately after that I was sick with a bit of a head cold. Still just about getting over that. And uh, But here we are, we're back now. And today I'm going to show you how we fit a GTRO gearbox from Efneo. Now thanks to my sickness, the video is a little bit, well let's say I shot some of the video two weeks ago and then I finished it a couple of days ago. So uh, this is the little intro to it and then I shall uh, discuss with you a little bit about the whys, hows and wherefores as we go through. But if this video is a little bit disjointed, a little bit more disjointed than normal, bear with me. As I say, it's been shot over the last two weeks and it's difficult for me to remember what I've said and what I haven't. So anyway, on with the video. Hope you enjoy it. Right, coffee made then. Let's have a look and see what comes in the box. This is the way it was delivered from Poland. Obviously it came in another box and was all uh, protected with bubble wrap and what have you. But um, I have been in the box already just to check that it was all there. And if he stops wobbling the camera around, we'll see what's inside the box. So there we have it is the gearbox and the crank obviously. There's also a bottom bracket made specifically for, there we go, get it in camera shot, there's a bottom bracket made specifically for the gearbox. You have to fit it with this bottom bracket, otherwise you avoid the warranty of the gearbox itself. The gearbox comes pre-attached to the cable and shifter. Um, the guys at Efneo emailed me and asked me the cable length that I required so that was all measured prior to them sending it out to me. They fitted that onto the shifter. And uh, when we get this out of the box in a little while to fit it onto the, uh, onto the cycle, then I'll show you more of that. But for now, there it is. We get the bottom bracket, the crank, the gearbox obviously, and there's a few little bits and bobs, screws and what have you underneath there in a packet as well. So we've got a 14mm spanner, a set of allen keys, of which as far as I'm aware I'll only need the largest one, which is 8mm I believe, yeah, 8mm allen key, a crank removal tool, the bottom bracket removal bit, a torque wrench for when we come to tightening it all up again, possibly we'll need a screwdriver show you that bit when we get there that's just a possibility apparently and also just to make sure it all works properly we've got some grease to grease up that new bottom bracket when we put it in now apparently that's all the tools we need however just in case I've got a full cycle tool kit here should we need them and a couple of other small tools as well but uh, if I use anything else as we're going along then I'll show you that at the end. Right then guys, um, she's in. As you can see I don't have that much room to manoeuvre in here so she's folded up but we've got the important bit closest to the camera because this is the side that we're mainly going to be working on. So all of this old gubbins at the front has got to come off. The pedals, the crank, the chain ring, all of it. So uh, I'm going to do that and uh, then we'll get on with the interesting bit. Let's 
the chain ring off. Now we've got to remove this, the bottom bracket. Let's get the cups out of the way first. Right, I had to stop recording there for a second because first tool that I didn't have to hand, which I had to go and find, was a spanner big enough to fit that. That's 36 mil. But uh, I've come up with this anyhow. I've got some some way of doing it now, hopefully, to get that undone. So let's give it a go and see. There we go, that's the old one out. Right, give that a good clean. Wipe the old grease out of there. Okay, so that's the old one off. For those of you watching this because you want to see this gearbox fitted and not because I ride a recumbent trike, this is a standard 68mm bottom bracket. The gearbox fits on any standard bike with this 68mm bottom bracket, I think. Fneo also sell a 100mm version, a version of the gearbox that fits on a 100mm bottom bracket, I think. But don't hold me to that one, you'd have to check their website. So, first things first then, we've got to fit Fneo's bottom bracket. Which looks remarkably similar to the one that we've just taken off. Apart from apparently this end here is a few millimetres longer so that it can hold the, uh, the gearbox on properly. So let's have a look. Oh, possibly this end is longer. Don't know. Right, the one thing we do want to make sure is, is that this has got some grease on it before we put it in. up. Just do it up by hand to start off with. Just greasing the other end up. hand tightness to start off with. Just make sure everything's situated nicely. So that's the bottom bracket in. Try not to get grease everywhere. So now we need the gearbox. Right, I'm struggling to show you this one-handed guys but uh, Basically, the gearbox now comes up and goes straight on there, like that. But, Houston, we have a problem. See this? Oh, let's see if I can get it to focus. It's sitting right on a button and that is no good we can't have it sitting on that button it needs to be sitting flush onto the metal and it's not you can see look under here there just focusing right it needs to be sitting down flush with that and it isn't not happy right I'm gonna have to do something about that and that something is removing the button, I fancy. 
button. Why am I calling it a button? I don't know, but you know what I mean. So as you can see, what I've done at the moment is I've put some masking tape, sorry, some duct tape, either side of that, uh, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but you know what it is anyhow. And I'm in the process of filing it down until we get it down flush with the rest of the boom, the body of the boom. So I'll bring you back when I've finished filing that down. Not got much more to do, another millimetre or so and it'll be done. If I can get it to focus, I think it's just about in focus, but you can see there now guys, if I uh, try and lift that up, I filed it down. So we're now getting a flush contact with the boom. So the next little bit to install is this thing called a wave spring. I think you can just about see that. It's exactly like the name suggests. It's a little spring with little wavy bits and that needs to go inside the bottom bracket cup like so. I'm just going to give that a bit of grease. see if you can see that. So that's the wave spring installed and all greased up around here. I think you can just about see it. So that's the bottom bracket installed, greased up, wave spring installed. I think I'm now ready to bring this up and attach the gearbox to the bike. Next job is screw in the axle bolt. Apparently that has to have a torque of 30 newton meters, which is quite high. So uh, there we go. So that's one side done. So having put the axle bolt through on this side, I'm now back to working on the lever arm here where I'm supposed to put cable ties around here to hold this lever arm tight against the bottom of the boom. Problem number two then is, is that the guys at FNEO have sent me cable ties that are not long enough to go around. So, I've got a cable tie that's just a little bit longer. Let's make sure we stay on the inside. The idea being that the cable tie holds the lever arm tight against the boom even when you back pedal. It doesn't actually have to take any force when you're pedaling forwards because then your force pushes the lever arm into the boom itself. It's on the back pedal so that's all this has to do. Hold it for the back pedal. So that's that job done. Okay then, so moving on to the uh, handlebars. What we have to do now is install this twist grip shifter onto the handlebar which is fairly simple that's just going to be a slide on jobby um, famous last words it's going to be simple but uh, yeah shouldn't be too difficult should it this all comes pre-installed don't know whether i've already said that or not but uh, yeah it's all pre-installed and cut to length by the guys at FNEO, so uh, this should be pretty simple. Let's have a go.
So the cable run, I couldn't get any easier than coming straight down the boom. Off the boom, it will then go onto the handlebar, straight up the handlebar, and into the twist grip shifter. And the shifter itself is held into place, just get it in the right position, is held into place just with this 2mm Allen key. Into a 2mm hex bolt on there. Give it a nice little twist just to tighten it up. We won't over tighten it because it's quite a small bolt. There we go. That's in place. Now all we've got to do is put the handle back on. Which I'm going to have to cut to length, aren't I? That's a shame, I don't like cutting things. Okay, that's that cut down. Twist it on. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that bit done. So, that was it. Um, that was the fitting part of it, anyhow. Ew, dirty hands. Um, the only bits you didn't see on camera were me putting the pedals back on and I took five links, one, two, three, four, yeah, four or five links out of the chain, obviously because there's a smaller chain ring at the front, so um, the only thing that remains now is to take it out for a test. So, see you in a minute. Right then, so the test that I've devised for this little gearbox is to go up a moderately sized hill which is this hill over here it goes down a fair way but um, it's not about the size of the hill what I'm going to do I'm going to go up that hill in the one to one efficient gear gear number 11 on the roll off and see how high I can get up the hill just staying in that one gear the trike is completely unloaded there's absolutely nothing but me on this trike and um, we'll push with my legs as hard as I can to get up that hill and uh, mark how far I get and then once we've fitted the gearbox I'm going to come back and do exactly the same thing again and um, we'll see how much further we can get up there I'll show you in a second but uh, my legs hardly go round at all when I'm in gear 11 That's quite hard work just doing that, let alone going uphill. So let's see how far we get. Actually, this no vehicle gate is quite a good marker as well. far up here. It's not going to be hoping that you're going to see the hill in the camera, but... Gear 11. 
Here, gnarly old tree for gear 11. So, as I say, it's been about two weeks since I was last here and uh, now we've got the gearbox. Let's try that same ride up the same hill and uh, see if we can get past the ugly old gnarled tree, shall we? Right, let's give it a go. Let me get my breath back. So, oh, my glasses are steaming up. Let me take them off. So, there we go. I think I got about twice as far up the hill today as what I did beforehand. And a little bit of difference is today we have a load on as well yeah I'm happy I'm just tired at the moment but I'm happy I think if I was fully over this cold I may well have gone a little bit further as well but yeah, it was good I'm happy So why did I buy a gearbox for the front of my trike? Well, those of you that have been watching my channel for a little while be well aware that the gearing on Trini is set up as such that she's made for speed. Oh yeah. Let's have a look out here, not been this way before. Wow, isn't that nice? So yeah, my trike has been built for speed and uh, as such the gearing is completely the opposite of what I need for what I want to use the trike for which is touring with a big heavy load on it. So, my reasoning is as simple as that. I needed more gears and uh, I just didn't have them. Going around Holland was okay. It's so flat. I think you can go around that in a single speed, but uh, as I'm sure lots of people do. But that's not what I want. So I decided rather than having the single chain ring that I did at the front to go for a gearbox gonna head back towards the path so I suppose the next question is why the GTRO gearbox from Fneo? squirrel <laughs> um, well, I, I've got to be honest and upfront, 
I'd never even heard of the GTRL gearbox until one of my subscribers, James, cheers for that, James, let me know about it in the comments because um, I was talking about gearing in one of my previous videos. And uh, so I had a good look at it. And being the sort of person I am, ideally I wanted something that I could fit myself. Ooh, let's have a look around this side now. Isn't that pretty? I didn't know any of this was here. I'm in Epping Forest again, by the way. Probably haven't mentioned that, have I? Um, yeah, so James. Thank you, James, for uh, pointing out the GTRO gearbox for me. As I say, I'd never even heard of it before, but um, kind of interested me just because it said on its website that uh, well obviously it was the sort of thing I was looking for I didn't want a derailleur and all that mumbo jumbo at the front of my trunk um, but I also wanted a gearbox that was different but wanted to be able to fit it myself and um, yeah, it just ticked all the boxes, to be fair. So, I have absolutely nothing to disclose about the GTRO or FNEO as a company. I have no affiliation to them. They gave me no discount. Um, I've spoken to the guys once or twice by email. Uh, other than that, I don't owe them anything. So, uh, anything that I have to say in this video is my own true opinion. It's not swayed by them at all. So I suppose you'd like to have a look at it whilst it's going round and round and round. <laughs> So my first impressions, this is literally my first ride on Trini since I fitted it, first proper ride. Yeah, my first impressions are, it's changed this trike completely. It's, um, it's just wow. I mean, everything seems so effortless now. And uh, as I said, I've got a little bit of a load on. I've not got my full kit, obviously. I'm only out for a day ride, but... Yeah, it's um, incredibly smooth. Both in, whilst I'm pedalling and changing gear. The gear changes are you wouldn't even know it's changed, to be honest. You know, there's no physical feeling of clunk or... You can't hear it. It's just there. You turn the handle and it it's, just changes. Very, very easy. It's a lovely day in the forest.
So other concerns raised in the comments were that um, this GTRO gearbox would be incompatible with the roll-off hub. So uh, due diligence, I contacted Roloff by email and uh, they were kind enough to point me in the direction of a website, one of their more recent websites, on the specs for the roll-off. Now the minimum gear ratio that they have on there is 1.9. That's 1 to 1.9. Um, I don't want to get too technical. Roloff's minimum spec is 1.9 to 1. So 15 teeth on the back, which is what this has. I have a 15 tooth sprocket on the roll-off. Equates to 1.9 at the front times that. Believe it or not, comes to 28. What's the smaller size chainring on the GTRO? 28. That's the actual physical chainring size. Yay, says me. So I'm within the bounds of the roll-off specified limits. 28 teeth at the front, 15 teeth at the back. But, yeah, there's always a but, isn't there? Problem is, is that it also specifies maximum rider weight of 100 kilos. Hey, I'm not that big, thank you very much. Now I'm 85, 86 kilos. Um, that leaves me, quick bit of maths, 14 to 15 kilos for my gear before I start pushing the limits of the hub. Um, I think my gear weighs a little bit more than that. When I went around Holland, I think my gear was, with food and water, I was between 17 and 20 kilos every day. So, as you can imagine, that pushes me outside the, the limit of what Roloff's warranty will offer. So what do we do then? We have, let's say, 15 kilos to play with for my kit. Well, to increase that, I can always lose weight, I suppose. Which, it's not undoable, is it, if I'm going on tour? I mean, going around Holland, I lost three and a half kilos. I think it was three and a half kilos. Um, there's no reason why I shouldn't lose three and a half kilos when I'm not on tour, really. Just exercise a bit more and eat a bit less. Um, other options, try and reduce the weight of my kit. See what we can get that down to, although I think 15 kilos is pretty minimal as it is, but uh, we can always try. And of course, the other option is, is to just push the limits of the roll-off. Um, it's something I'm going to have to try out. My glasses are steaming up. I can take those off. Um, it's something I'm going to have to try out. I'll face out the sun for a second. I will, um, I will give it a go, I think. Before I go off on any long tours, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to load the trike up. Maybe put 20 kilos on her. And me. All my kit and then go up to the big hills. I would rather do it now when I'm closer to home and uh, break the roll off than I would be thousands of miles from home in the middle of nowhere. But otherwise I think I'm really really close to being within the bounds of what the roll off will take anyhow. So um, let's see, let's see. Uh, as I say, I, my legs aren't Olympian athlete by any means. As you know, I'm uh, I'm a little bit weak in my right leg as it is, so well, I wouldn't even match up to a, an ordinary adult in that regard. So there we go. Do you know what? I'm getting hungry. I'm going to get my stove out. 
I'm gonna make a Tim's taste tips. Ooh, take a break off before you move. Oh dear. So welcome back guys. If you want to know how I cook that, there'll be another video out shortly showing you how to do it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna sit here and eat it whilst we have a little chat. I'll try and cut out the bits where I'm chewing. I know you don't like watching me with my mouth full. Um, but I wanted to talk some more about this gearbox. So I hope you like this video. Um, obviously it's my first attempt at a mechanics video. I'm no cycle mechanic, I'm a cyclist. Um, I found it quite difficult getting the camera angles on it to be honest. But uh, hopefully you can understand what I was doing when I was fitting it. Um, it was really, really very easy. I know it said on the website it was the easiest um, front gearbox to fit on any cycle, but uh, you think sometimes that's a, just a bit of salesman's blah. But it really, really was easy. A couple of little hiccups. I mean, one, one, out of the two hiccups that I had, one of them was nothing to do with uh, Efneo's uh, gearbox. That was the trike and that little uh, bottle holder screw. Uh, in, it just happened to be in the wrong place. It's just rotten luck. I and mean, it would not happen on any other trike, I dare say. Um, but on mine, it was in the way and had to come off. So I had to file that one off. And the other one um, was just the the cable ties underneath were too small. No biggie, really, is it? You just get some longer cable ties. But other than that, it went on exactly the way that said it would in their instructions. You follow the instructions online on their website. And uh, very, very simple. Mainly because it comes pre-installed with the cables. That's really, really helpful. I hate having to do braking gear cables. Speaking of which, whilst I have been off of YouTube for a little while, I've redone all the brakes, shoes and cables, on Trini. Um, yeah, went right through those. One of the brake calipers fell to pieces on me. That was my fault, not the caliper. I uh, undid one of the screws on it too far and it just all flew apart. There were springs inside it went swing. And uh, I ended up with a hundred little bits and I didn't know how to put it back together. So, new caliper time. Whoops. Oh, and I lost my flag. The uh, HP Velotechnic flag. Don't know what happened to it. Went to find it last week and it's gone. Right. That's me done eating, I think. Um, so, about time for me to head home then, guys. Um, hopefully that was a bit informative around this new gearbox. Obviously I'll be keeping you informed over the coming days, weeks and months as to how I'm getting on with it. First impressions are, though, were very very nice piece of kit um, very smooth really easy to use but that's it for now then so uh, I'll see you in the next one take care guys and any questions leave them in the comments below see you soon then guys ta-da